thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and Hinduism, just to mention a few of the most popular religions. But what is their purpose? Let's take Christianity as an example because it's well known. What is the ultimate reward that is being offered to people according to the Christian's point of view? Going to heaven, being with God, or maybe even becoming one with it? Experiences of purity, getting rid of all evil, which we call sins. If you look at the current society and the globalization that is taking place, you will see that in many developed countries, religion disappears more and more. Maybe you still have many people that are Christians, officially, but they are not deeply religious. They don't really believe in those ideas, isn't it? At least it was like this for me when I was a Christian in the past. As scientific thinking started to develop, people came to the conclusion that many of those religious themes are simply irrational or that they don't make fully sense. So people started dropping those themes of Christianity or any other religion. And this is also going to be the future for many more people because look at how quickly globalization is going to take place. I'm not here to say whether this is good or bad or whether this needs to change. I'm here to point out something interesting which is the actual result of this process. And people start saying, okay, I don't believe in all of this religious nonsense. It's just bullshit. Okay. Fair point, but those people are not aware that they believe in something else, in another illusion. And the old image of religion was replaced by a new one. And this is not religious, not at all, but it fulfills the same underlying function. Instead of becoming one with God, become one with the workplace. Instead of getting rid of the evil, you will get the good right away in form of money. But money itself has no meaning. Therefore, tons of unnecessary consumer goods will be invented. You don't need to go to heaven, we will make you live longer. 72 virgins in paradise? Why not on earth? Maybe they're not virgins, but who cares as long as it's any form of pleasure or gratification. You want peace in heaven? We will try to do anything to bring heaven to earth. Speeches are being held about fairness, equality and freedom. But is everything as equal, fair or free as others say? Or is it only a promise that serves as a belief? Or maybe even as a whole belief system that nourishes a specific desired mental image? Do you see how we've traded one good for another? As I already pointed out, the image changed but the underlying longing is still the same. Maybe you say, I have more knowledge than my ancestors hundreds of years ago. I don't believe in that story of Jesus, Mohammed or Buddha. No, of course not, but you believe in the crowd being part of it, money, alcohol, sex and all those other forms of short-term gratification. If others become aware of those longings and start seeing people's naivety, they are going to make use of it, of you. But don't worry, in the end they will live in the same illusion, wanting more money, power, attention or whatsoever. It's the same old story, but we mostly forget that we are part of it. And I can tell you, the future is going to be quite similar. Again, we will have the same mad longing, only the superficial object of gratification that is on the surface, that can be perceived, is going to change. And trust me, science is going to invent new fancy gadgets, far better ones than money or already existing drugs that take a shortcut to stimulate our need for any kind of pleasure in the most direct and efficient way. Okay, pause. What now? How do we find a way out of this vicious circle? What needs to happen that we are not overly dependent on others and all those external goods?
we need to stop believing in them. The shift from believing to knowing is what actually needs to take place. But you believed your whole life in other people's ideas. And why? Because it's comfortable. You don't have to think on your own, as long as it's perceived as appropriate by society, no one will say anything against you. Who cares whether it's true or not, as long as you have your peace, your illusionary peace, then you are a good citizen, thinking what needs to be thought, saying what is ought to be said, living life as it should be lived. So one possible way out of this is to stop believing other people. If you want to be radical, don't believe anything and think for yourself. Of course, you won't be Jesus after one day of doing it, but you will be responsible for yourself and your thoughts. And of course, other people will come to you and say, you are wrong, but don't be discouraged. Simply keep on going, keep on questioning yourself and others and soon your standpoint of believing will transform into one of knowing. Another way is to rise above our worldly desires. I think this is even more difficult but you can start slowly. So for this we need to become more aware of our tendencies for cravings. So when do we crave? What do we crave? And how intense is it? So actually becoming more sensitive. And then you can also shift your standpoint of thinking to a standpoint of more mindfully experiencing. What can also happen and I mean happening because it's nothing that can be forced, is that you have some kind of experience that is so significant that you realize that all your old beliefs were illusionary. If you do not know what I'm talking about, make sure to check out this video um, on this topic. And out of this situation, a certain type of knowing can also arise. It's just very tricky because you can't force it. You can't do anything to get this experience. The only thing that you can do is to do certain type of practices or maybe taking certain type of substances um, which make those illusions visible. Even if it's just for a very short time frame, often this can be enough if it is perceived as meaningful. Then after having had this experience, you will start questioning many things and rather tend to think for yourself. Maybe not everyone, but some people. Maybe you do not think entirely for yourself, but definitely more than before. Therefore, the actual foundation of religion should be the inner experience of something. Doesn't matter whether you want to call this God or not. And in the next video I'm going to talk about religion and its relation to God, so make sure to check out this video. But the most important point is that religion should be based on experience. And out of this experience comes faith. And this is the essence of religion. Once you discover this, your old beliefs of how religion should look like will simply fade away over time. But if religion is not based on actual experience, but on any kind of superficial beliefs, doesn't matter whether this is about God or money, the result will be the same. People who will blindly believe in any kind of promises, governments or philosophies, when I wear my flashing sword, hoping that something is going to happen, but nothing is going to happen. And I will repay those who hate me. O oh Lord, raise me to thy right hand and count me among thy saints.